Anna from Bright Lane Gardens and today I just wanted to put together a quick video on my daily watering process for watering freshly planted seeds and young seedlings. If you have any experience starting your own plants from seed, then you already know just how important watering and moisture levels are for these freshly planted seeds. Oftentimes, freshly planted seeds or young seedlings are the least forgiving types of plants when it comes to overwatering or not watering frequently enough. In some circumstances, even just three hours late can mean the difference between your plant surviving and your plant dying. So in today's video, I wanna show you guys what tools I use to water. I'm going to walk you through my steps that I do on a daily basis. I'm going to walk you through signs and symptoms of dehydration or overwatering, and we're going to talk about some other tips for success. Let's head on over to my wet bar area so we can walk through some of the tools that I use every day. Okay, so we are over by my quote wet bar area, which makes it sound a lot more glamorous than it is, but it does have one key feature that is absolutely essential when it comes to me being able to keep my seedlings alive, and that is the sink that's right behind me. So before you even start planting your seeds in the soil, I think it's really important for you to know where are you going to have your setup take place and is it close enough to a source of water that you will want to water those plants every day because these plants need to be watered every single day for the first several weeks of their lives until they can start to establish some really solid roots in the soil. So keep that in mind as you're getting your seed starting station all set up. The location of it really matters. You need to be close to a water source or you have to have a lot better willpower than I do because if the sink was any further away than it is right now, there's no way I would be successful in watering these plants. The second tool that I use every single day is definitely going to be my spray bottle. So this is just a regular spray bottle. It has two spraying features. One is a really nice spread out fan spraying feature. The other one is a pin prick, like almost as if you were trying to power wash something off of uh, the countertop or something like that. I never use that feature. The one that you really want is going to be a really nice and even spray. So as long as you have a spray bottle that has a spray pattern like that, that can cover a larger area with just a gentle mist of water, that's certainly the type of watering device that you're going to want for freshly planted seeds. Also, just keep in mind, make sure that there were never any chemicals or pesticides or anything in that spray bottle before you put water in it, as that would, of course, affect the health of your seedlings. Now, if you're growing a lot of plants like I am here for the plant nursery, then you might want something that's a little more efficient than just a spray bottle and that is going to be my mister here. So this is exclusively used for water. We've never had any other chemicals or pesticides in here, of course, and this is just powered by pressure. So just like some of your outdoor sprayers are, you use this hand pump on top and it gives you a really, really nice mist out of that nozzle there. The nozzle is also adjustable to make that mist finer or heavier depending on what your needs are. So this is really handy. Usually I have to fill this up two or three times to get through all of my trays, but it is still a major time saver compared to just using that spray bottle. Now, if you're thinking I have a watering can and that is going to be just fine, it's unlikely that that's going to be just fine. Anytime you're watering a freshly planted seed or even a really brand new seedling with something that's as strong as a watering can or a spout of water, you really run the risk of driving that seed way further down into the soil to the point where once it germinates, it's never going to be able to find the surface of the soil and therefore you'll have a lost seed. Same thing goes with any of your younger seedlings. If they have too much of a force of water on top of them, it runs the risk of damaging any leaves or stems, which can prevent the plant from actually growing up and reaching maturity as well. So if you don't already have a spray bottle, it's really inexpensive. I'll link these two that I just showed you here in the description below, but definitely a worthwhile investment if you wanna start your plants from seed. The next thing that I wanna talk about is definitely going to be humidity domes. So if you've been watching any of my other seed starting videos, you'll know that I always use humidity domes on my freshly planted seeds. And this is a really good example of why. So it might be a little tricky to see on these ones here, but these actually have a lot of condensation, a lot of water collected on the inside of that lid. And essentially just as the normal evaporation process happens out of the soil, this acts as a little mini greenhouse capturing that evaporated water as condensation and then eventually dripping it back 
down onto the plants. This keeps the relative humidity surrounding the plants much higher than it would be without it. So these humidity domes are a really low cost investment that can make a major difference when it comes to watering your plants. If you're like me and you work a regular nine to five job, then having something like a humidity dome is absolutely necessary because it gives you just a little bit of leeway, a little bit of a more forgiving, flexible zone. So if you're a few hours late on watering your seedlings, you're less likely to lose one due to dehydration than you would be without that humidity dome. I have a couple different designs here that I'm gonna show you today. I'll link my top two. One is for more mature plants, one is just for those freshly planted seedlings, but there's a ton out there on the market and I cannot recommend humidity domes enough. These are an essential tool when it comes to starting anything from seed. Now behind me over here, as you might notice, this one's a much larger humidity dome. This is going to be for my taller, more mature plants that are still really needing that moisture support and really benefiting from that greenhouse effect that this provides. Obviously my plants can get pretty tall before they run the risk of hitting the top of this. And as an added bonus, it does also have these two vents in the top that you can open or close or adjust in any way, shape or form that you need to, which does allow some airflow to get inside of the vent as well, which we'll go through airflow in just a couple minutes here, but that's another really essential step of the process when it comes to starting plants from seed. So we've reviewed the top two tools that I love to use to water my seedlings. And of course the importance of that humidity dome and maintaining that consistent moisture for freshly planted seeds. Next, I wanna talk about my schedule for watering. So as I mentioned earlier, I do work a nine to five. I would say my schedule is pretty flexible compared to most office jobs, but there is still commitments that I need to tend to that come above and beyond the plants. Believe it or not, plants is not what pays the bills for me. It's just a super big hobby of mine that I love to talk about. So thank you for watching. But because of my work schedule, I can't be down here watching the plants every hour of the day. So typically what I do is in the morning, I will come through and I will give each of these trays a really thorough watering. And what I mean when I say a really thorough watering is making sure that the top layer of soil on every single one of these little planting cells here is completely soaked with water. Now, I don't want to oversaturate the soil, of course, but I did use a really lightweight, a very excellent draining soil mix, which if you didn't watch my video on that, I will link it here. But because I use such a well draining soil mix, I'm way less concerned about overwatering than I am about underwatering. So for that first watering of the day, I really want to get this as thoroughly as I can. I want all areas to be dark, just like they are down here. So any of the light areas here would darken as they became moist. And I just want to make sure that there's an abundance of water for that plant to absorb. When I do that first watering of the day and I thoroughly soak that top layer of soil, I also am going to remove these humidity domes here and I'm going to keep them off for a couple of hours. The reason for that is seedlings love consistent moisture and they also really need fresh airflow. If you don't have enough airflow introduced to your plants, it can cause all sorts of issues from root rot to the roots not getting enough oxygen to encouraging mold growth or even mushrooms. And I get mushrooms all the time, just in case you guys have gotten mushrooms too. Mushrooms on their own are inherently a bad thing to have near plants. I just pluck them right out and make sure that we're not trying to sustain the growth of a fungi and a plant. However, if you do see mushrooms coming up in your soil repeatedly, it's definitely a sign that you're keeping things a little too moist with not enough airflow in there. So keep an eye on those mushrooms, pluck them out as you see them, and just pay attention. Are you getting a lot of them? If so, you might wanna be removing that humidity dome for perhaps half the day, or maybe even putting a fan on your plants. So I've removed all of my humidity domes from my plant trays here on the upper level. I haven't watered these yet today, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and go through, do that first really thorough watering on all of the trays here on the top shelf. I 
I've thoroughly watered the top layer of soil on all of these trays here and now I'm going to go ahead and leave my humidity domes off for at least a couple hours. Now a quick explanation of the room that I'm in currently. This is a side room on our home. Not a lot of doors are opening and closing. It does not get a ton of airflow. There is certainly not a breeze happening in here and it stays a very consistent 78 degrees because it has its own boiler which is a huge spoil for us don't get me wrong but it does help me understand that I know exactly what the conditions for my seedlings are going to be so if you are keeping your seedlings in a draftier area or an area that's like a main living room where you have people coming and going and doors are opening and closing there's a good chance that you won't have to leave your lids off for that long and your plants might actually dry out if the lids are left off for that long now on the flip side if you do work a nine-to-five outside of the home and you you water your seedlings before you leave for work in the morning definitely don't leave your uh, humidity domes off of those trays for the entire day I would recommend propping them up I use just this little I have a bunch of these little plastic trellises here I stick them in the very side of the tray and I just lift up one side of that humidity dome to allow a little bit of airflow to come in there but it still keeps some of that greenhouse effect so I don't lose all of my moisture throughout the day so if you do have to leave for work during the day don't leave your humidity domes completely off but definitely prop them just a little bit to enable some airflow to get in there. Another important thing to know is going to be your seedling heat mats. If you do use those, which I love the seedling heat mats. I think they're great. Um, I usually use them right up until I start to see that seed pop. I'll leave it on there just a little bit longer. But once I start to see some significant growth above the soil, I do usually unplug those heat mats, A, to save electricity, but B, the heat mats can actually dry out your seedlings really quickly, a lot faster than without those seed mats. So the extra heat is so beneficial when it comes to that germination. It will help all of your seeds germinate closer to the same time, and it can also increase your germination rate significantly. However, once you do start to see those seedlings emerge above the soil and notice that they are getting pretty well established, it's definitely okay to go ahead and unplug those seedling mats because they will dehydrate your soil a lot more quickly than if you weren't using them. So my second watering of the day is typically done right before I put my my humidity domes back on. This second watering is a lot lighter than the first watering. There's one thing that I am looking for and that's have any of my cells dried out. So this is a really good example. On this tray here you can see that these cells right in the middle here are look to be pretty dried out but these cells on the edge here are actually quite a bit darker. This is actually another good example of the heat mat. I do still have a heat mat on this tray here but the heat mat is lengthwise and it goes right through the middle of the this tray so the all of the cells that are right above where that heat mat is are really dry compared to the cells that are outside of that zone so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna water the dry cells really thoroughly like I did for my first watering but any of the other cells that look like they're already pretty moist I'm just gonna do a nice light layer of my misting bottle and all that does for me is it puts a little bit of moisture right on top of the leaves right on top of the soil and introducing that layer of moisture just to the top layer of soil and plants here is going to enable that moisture to evaporate and collect as condensation on the bottom of that humidity dome like I showed you earlier in the video which gives this tray that greenhouse effect all night long so for my second watering of the day my goal is to really target any dry areas that I see and outside of that to just give it a nice layer of moisture that's going to give it a greenhouse cycle in that humidity dome overnight so overall, that is my usual daily watering schedule when it comes to watering my seedling trays. I essentially water twice a day, every single day, with that first watering of the day being a very thorough watering that's going to get all the way down to the bottom of where the roots are on those seedlings and taking those humidity domes off for a couple hours to allow some breathing, some airflow to get in there. My second watering of the day, I'm going to target any dry spots I see and then just give a nice layer of moisture so we can encourage that greenhouse effect to take place after I put that humidity dome back on, which I do put that back on right after that second watering. A couple other things to note, um, a lot of people do fans in their seedling setups. I get it, I love it. We oftentimes have fans out here. You can see I've got a fan right behind me here. When my seedlings are very young and don't have a lot of growth on them and my plant room isn't overloaded with plants, I tend to leave my fans off. 
If I do notice that I've had a couple mushrooms pop up overnight or if it looks like I'm getting any mildew or mold growth on any of my plants, at that point I'll go ahead and turn those fans on, usually for those couple hours that I have the humidity domes off of my trays is when I run my fans. I do not like to run them all night. It just dries out the soil so fast that it's not something that's sustainable for me to keep up with. Now I do know that one of the top reasons that people do like to use fans on some of their young seedlings is because it helps create a stronger, more robust seedling in the sense that it's like a natural wind that the seedling would run into outdoors, which would of course strengthen that stem, strengthen the leaves, and just prevent it from being top heavy or floppy uh, in its young age. There is another way to combat this without the fans. You can actually just take the palm of your hand and gently run it over the tops of your plants when you come down and water it twice a day. Typically twice a day is enough for this type of plant. And what that will do is it does have the same results as a wind in the sense that the plant will respond by strengthening its roots, strengthening its stem system to try to counteract the wind or your hand bending that plant all the way down to the soil. So if you do this simple maneuver just a couple times a day, that can actually create that same effect without having to dry out your plants. And then my last tip for the day, if you have a setup like this where you're dealing with several different trays, a lot of different varieties of plants and a couple different levels of your grow setup here, I encourage you to mix and match your trays. So move them around as much as you can. Even doing something as simple as taking this tray out this way and flipping it this way can cause the plant to have a different interaction with the amount of air, water, and sunlight that it's getting. So I love to mix and match these as much as I can. I'm constantly moving the ones from the top shelf down to the bottom shelf and vice versa. And that's because each shelf has a different heat level. Each shelf has a different sunlight level. I can't keep everything perfectly consistent, but I can rotate my plants on a regular basis, ensuring that they're all being exposed to very similar conditions on a regular basis. This may seem like an exhaustive process to go through just to grow a plant from seed, but I assure you this process I really only have to do for a short time frame. Now, typically once my seedlings reach this size or are at least strong enough to withstand uh, more of a water spout type of watering, then I do switch over to my watering can and that of course will soak the entire soil, which gives me a lot more leeway. I typically only have to water these guys once a day or even once every other day. Another note is if you are growing a native plant, these are purple cone flowers actually, um, but if you are growing a native plant and they do start to reach this size, this is where I start to taper down my watering and I will actually restrict the water to a certain extent to encourage the taproot of this plant to dig down deeper in search of moisture. So there is a benefit to once your plants are established and once your seedlings are healthy and you know that they're gonna make it, that's when you can start to take some of these more drought tolerant plants and really challenge them to go in search of that water. What you do is by driving that taproot down deeper, you actually create a stronger, more robust seedling that will have a longer, deeper taproot when you go to transplant it into the ground outside. And doing that just gives it a much better shot at finding water during some uh, heavy drought seasons or really hot seasons that you might have in your property. And that wraps up my tutorial on how I water all of my seedlings and freshly planted seeds. I know this might have seemed like a lot of steps and you might be growing seeds at home thinking, I don't do that at all. And that's completely fine. A lot of the plants that I showed you today are native plants that we actually put up for sale at our plant nursery. So having a really high success rate, it means a lot to us and directly impacts our profitability. So we definitely have things a little more down to a science, but even with that, like I mentioned, my schedule isn't open enough to be able to check on these guys constantly. So using some of the tips and tricks that I showed you today can help improve your success rate even if you can't babysit your plants around the clock every single day. We're smack dab in the middle of my seed starting series. I've walked through a lot on planting native seeds and vegetable seeds are coming right up. Although I will say we are getting snow um, up here in northern Michigan again today. So really when it comes to growing vegetable plants for us, our winter season doesn't technically end for a little while longer here. However, that being said, I love to start my veggie seeds indoors. So that will be coming up soon. I'm gonna be starting a 
couple of my annual flower seeds indoors as well. So if you love starting seeds indoors and growing plants from seed, then this is the channel for you. Definitely take the time to subscribe and set up your alerts for our channel. Several videos are in the pipeline and coming up very soon. If you have any questions at all for me on my watering process, my watering routine, or anything to do with starting plants from seed, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. And other than that, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to spend with me on my channel today. It seriously helps out small businesses like ours so much. I can't thank you enough, and I sure hope to catch you next time. Have a great day!